Hi. How you doing? I wanted to give you a personal update because of them, some things that happened recently. I'm going to be looking down now and then because I have some notes, a lot of notes. So I started talking online about some problems in my community and uh, people didn't realize these things were ongoing. And one issue was uh, that people didn't really understand the part of my own failures or whether I saw them as wrong. Uh, there were also concerns with information I posted uh, that is now toned down and explained better. Um, I tried uh, what I called a common law marriage in uh, 2008 through 2009 and possibly some of 2007 uh, at the earliest. Uh, I'm going to explain that part on video so you can see my nonverbals and understand better. It will be very censored for YouTube. <clears throat> I'll, I'll also say that I have several people in my life uh, supporting what I'm writing, including my awesome wife, uh, victims and other sources, and house church. I understand the optics of what I've discussed in light of my own life, but I haven't done anything with women that is inappropriate uh, before or since what I considered to be a common law marriage. I have um, notes, like I said, so I'm going to be looking at them a lot. Uh, what is common law marriage? <clears throat> it basically means, uh, honestly, to live with someone uh, who is your uh, significant other uh, and when you're not married. So you've been, uh, so this is what uh, NPR.org says in a 2016 article. So you've been with your partner for a long time. It's time to start considering yourselves common law married, a sort of marriage-like status that triggers when you've lived together for seven years, right? Nope, that's all bogus, unquote. Uh, for one, common law marriage, uh, uh, which traces uh, roots to old English uh, law, isn't a nationwide thing. Uh, uh, that's part of the quote, sorry. All right, end quote. Uh, Divorcenet.com uh, says, as of January 2nd, 2005, common law marriage has been abolished in Pennsylvania. That means that Pennsylvania does not recognize any common law marriage entered into after January 2nd, 2005. However, couples who entered into a common law marriage before <clears throat> January 2nd, 2005 are still recognized as married. IS Family Law says, all, uh, this is because the events I described happened in Michigan. Um, although Michigan does not recognize common law marriages, individuals that entered into a common law marriage in another state will be treated as a married couple in Michigan. Okay, so this is how it happened. Uh, Christians aren't under uh, the Mosaic Law, the Old, Old Testament Law, but the, or it's also called the Tanakh, uh, uh, but the, it is useful for uh, learning lessons, uh, and you know, like the New Testament says, for doctrine, reproof, and instruction in righteousness. Uh, so uh, you can also see yourself and God in it. And I really mm. recommend reading uh, Gary Schnecker's book, uh, The Torah Story, on that front. All right, so rather than uh, trying to be like Daniel or be like David, uh, see yourself in it and see how God responds to that. Uh, that's what he said to me. So most of what I know about what he says is not from his book, but from him being my professor. So it is uh, really like God talking to you. You can uh, uh, learn to recognize his voice that way. You know, mm -hmm. if you put yourself in the story and uh, see how God responds, you know, and that's uh, a way for you to recognize his voice. Uh, the laws are sometimes examples of love as well, uh, like looking out for disadvantaged people. Uh, however, sometimes the law could be for very specific reasons, uh, likely, uh, some say, and I agree, to protect the health of the Hebrew people living in the wilderness uh, and protect their bloodlines so the Messiah could meet prophetic requirements. Uh, therefore, it isn't something that you could or should replicate uh, I tried to replicate it with my common law marriage in a small way. I now realize I was using the law to try to make a sketchy situation more certain. 
uh, she had been separated from her ex uh, for over a year and she said he was holding up the divorce. I felt it was my responsibility to take care of her children with her despite uh, her situation and that's why we thought a uh, common law marriage would be a solution. Later, it turned out that uh, it was her abusing process by holding up the divorce, she admitted. Uh, so uh, God hates this. Uh, God doesn't specifically say he hates divorce. He uh, hates this. Uh, putting away is what it is called in the <clears throat> Old and New Testament, and it's often mistranslated as uh, divorce, although the, it does mention divorce as you know, something that's, you know, because of people's hard hearts, that doesn't mean it's not allowed. I mean, if you're, uh, if there are hard hearts, uh, you know, you might not be able to change them. Uh, so um, the <clears throat> Hebrew word is shalach, and the Greek word is apaluo. That's the words I'm talking about. Those are the words. Okay, so when I was looking, what I was looking at was mostly Deuteronomy 19.15, which says, one witness is not enough to accuse a person of a crime or sin. A case must be proved by two or three witnesses. It didn't seem to me just to apply to sin, but to the law, uh, because Jesus said, your own law says that when two witnesses say the same thing, you must accept what they say. That's in John 8, 17. Uh, Deuteronomy 19.5 will be, uh, and other links will be in the description. Uh, <clears throat> No one in our Christian community that we asked really believed in what we were doing. So there was only ever one witness besides us anyway, and the person was not a Christian as far as we knew. Um, I had convinced her to change uh, to a small community church near us instead of a rich Presbyterian church she was attending. Uh, one person at the new church said, yeah, a lot of people believe in unofficial marriage. It's called living together. And that sort of struck me. It really did, uh, and I didn't want it to, but it did. Um, I denied it and defended my position uh, calmly, uh, but I believe I was wrong. I was in too deep, and I wasn't yet strong enough to face the difficult climb out of the situation. Uh, my support system was wrapped up in hers now. I had disregarded and alienated friends in Pennsylvania by trusting her at all. Uh, someone asked, uh, once asked me if uh, uh, her and I did hand fasting. Uh, hand fasting comes from Wicca, and no, we did not do that. Uh, they may derive it from other ancient rites. It's a ceremony where people are bound for eternity beyond death. If the movie, if the 1991 movie The Doors presents it correctly, which I don't recommend. I don't recommend the movie. It's in a, uh, just, uh, you know... You can look it up on IMDb, Parents Guide. So uh, it wasn't, um, uh, what we did wasn't anything fancy. I just proposed basically and she accepted it and accepted a ring. Um, we called it a betrothal and uh, it, in our justification in the Bible that we chose and selected, we uh, considered the uh, promise to marry acceptable enough to have uh, intimate relations and I even let things uh, we did before that pass uh, that were also inappropriate uh, before marriage, even though they weren't uh, all the way. So uh, regardless of how I felt about what I'd done, I wasn't sure about the person and should have listened to my friends and my gut, especially before getting this far. Uh, <clears throat> the doubts about the person just grew. In the end, a thing can be broken as easily as it's made. Uh, it was made with a word, and it was broken with a word. Uh, she got out of it, and there was no accountability. Uh, a good way to have prevented this was to have listened to my friends who warned me about her uh, from the start, and just not gotten involved. And uh, you know, some people have a very sad story. It sounds legit but you know you have to take into account track record and the fact that um, uh, even though you want to believe someone you uh, if they have used a sob story or false repentance before uh, over and over you um, it's not a matter of forgiveness it's a matter of um, you know earning trust uh, 
and uh, some people have uh, are not worthy of that trust. It's as simple as that. It's real, and if you don't uh, see that, you will. Uh, you know, lives will be destroyed. People could even die. All right. So um, <clears throat> another problem that someone brought up uh, is uh, uh, when I was uh, getting out of this situation is uh, and after I got out of it was uh, to be careful about vows. Uh, you see, uh, when he was talking to me about that, I realized that just before getting back together with this person in 2008 or, or, or early t or late 2007, I made a vow to myself that I ever got a chance to get back together with her that I would. That in itself, that vow was a mistake. Uh, much transpired between the previous relationship and the current time that uh, which was at that time uh, that should have reemphasized um, that the existing problems she had um, and her choices uh, and uh, f uh, you know it, manipulation were long term and that uh, the repentance was phony uh, the the vow uh, took the place of both uh, good judgment and Christ's leading uh, Jesus said uh, s only say yes if you uh, mean yes and no if you mean no if you say any more than yes or no it is from the evil one uh, that's in Matthew 5 37 I went along with some of the sinful behavior first things I considered borderline uh, polyamory now consider uh, now I consider the specific things I did polyamory and sin it was an unhealthy relationship and the person seemed to be intent on keeping me around so as long as I was okay with anything uh, I say that because someone had suggested that cheating quote 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 unquote was a uh, way for her to try to keep to keep trying to get out of the relationship but that was not how it happened like she wanted me to be involved and even in things with other people is, is sometimes and she also uh, you know kept wanting me to accept oh you know this just happened it didn't mean anything it's want me to stay there all right but in the, the end there were sinful sinful behaviors uh, that I wasn't willing to accept I also believed in the sunk cost fallacy and I thought that if I just made enough compromises then it would work I, I literally uh, couldn't believe I could get into such an irredeemable situation, so I denied it was irredeemable and tried to redeem it. It was very difficult for me to realize and accept that it was a waste of my time, energy, compassion, and love. I got reconnected with friends in my house church, or house church, at that time house church style independent Bible studies. Uh, but they are essentially house churches, regardless of what they considered themselves. Uh, and then later, uh, actual, like, named uh, house church networks, uh, and then later another house church. Uh, so uh, since there was a lot more to the situation, I knew that people uh, couldn't handle everything. Uh, people who I went to, to uh, you know, at that time, I was airing grievances, and I was uh, trying to get um, improve my well-being. And I, that's not why I recently spoke up, okay? So what I was doing back then was airing my grievances in small ways to people very close to me in bite-sized increments they could handle because the situation was so bad and there were so many details I haven't mentioned. Whenever I talked to people about it during my healing, uh, which was mostly up until 2015, I told different uh, bits and pieces. All right, so and and it really helped me. Em emotional mastery really helped me as well. I was raised in a strict environment where emotions were part of the flesh uh, and to be ignored for that reason, and they may be part of the flesh. But I I learned from my uh, non-denominational Christian friends and associates that uh, emotions are normal, and even if uh, even like senses. All right, you can deny desires to follow Christ, uh, but if you have eyes to see, you should use them. Uh, you should also use your emotions as senses, but not believe them as absolute truth. Uh, they can lead you to truth, uh, if though, if you uh, use them correctly, 
or they can lead you the wrong way. Uh, if you don't uh, uh, consider those things, all right. So uh, if you if you don't correctly identify what's going on, if you deal with your triggers and express your traumas to trustworthy people, your emotions and situations. Uh, uh, will stop triggering so much so you'll understand uh, how to feel uh, it's appropriate like you I don't mean like you control your feeling but when a feeling comes you uh, just experience it sometimes all right and so you can if, uh, notice that things you feel are inappropriate for the situation and then try to dig in and figure out why all right and then once you deal with that uh, your emotions are easier to control, uh, not repress, but just manage and understand. And, uh, and uh, also they will be more appropriate to the situation. Uh, that's the theory and that's worked out in my experience. Uh, sharing works and, uh, and it's, um, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's usually gonna be, the, the really bad details are often gonna be uh, individuals who can handle it. Uh, and then maybe later when you can see it objectively, you can discuss it more uh, with more people and uh, without, you know, coming off the wrong way, which is still possible, obviously. All right, so I've, I've been able to discuss and confront things that other people find difficult. Uh, though I may joke about them sometimes uh, when I write, it is just showing people, or when I'm talking, it is just showing people uh, that if you don't laugh, you'll cry. Uh, humor is also a normal way to deal with uncomfortable topics. Uh, part of our mind is uh, intimate relations. If we can't talk about it, we can't know ourselves. If we don't know ourselves and don't make our own relationship with Christ confident, we are more susceptible to manipulation by significant others and religious leaders. Uh, who have ego problems and whatnot. Uh, one local pastor where I attended started saying that a certain animate behavior between married couples was wrong and that alcohol was wrong and he also went Calvinist. Um, so the Bible doesn't prohibit alcohol. It only says drunkenness. Um, <clears throat> all the while this, uh, well, also I should say some people can't handle it, uh, so be aware of that. All right, so all, all the while this married um man uh, turned out to be who was saying all this legalistic stuff was uh, doing inappropriate things with his secretary um, <clears throat> another example is in the book they shall expel demons Derek Prince uh, said that oral let's say was a demon and it was uh, when he was talking to a married couple these are these are laws not in the Bible and if there was any uh, demon in these cases, it was the spirit of legalism. Uh, we can't let gurus define us, or we will be living uh, by the power of man, not the power of God. Every part of the body is important, and Christ is the head. There is no person that should be the head of your church. When we give people too much power, the ego can lead to sin, and we shouldn't be surprised because the two are connected. All right, so this, um, you know, uh, inappropriate intimate relations and ego are highly connected right uh, making one person the linchpin of your community also makes a single point of failure even the apostles didn't always agree with each other uh, but people today want some sort of professional to uh, to live spiritual life for them uh, similar is similar to how people in first uh, Samuel 8 asked for a king to rule over them I'll read that chapter for warnings about that I'll uh, we'll have the link in the description. Uh, in relationships, uh, similar things can happen. If someone tries to make you feel guilty uh, when it isn't appropriate, uh, maybe they are up to something. And uh, in general, just trying to make someone feel guilty, um, it's not really the way to escalate properly. So the way to escalate properly is not to get more emotional and more uh, verbal or more... Uh, physical obviously uh, that would be very wrong unless there was someone was, uh, doing self-defense okay so the correct way to escalate is to get help uh, <clears throat> all right so the idea of uh, guilting people uh, it isn't uh, definite um, that they are doing something uh, else wrong they're hiding but it is a red flag for that 
Um, and that happened to me several times in this uh, relationship I had. And it was uh, during underlying behaviors the other person was doing that were wrong. If you look at the uh, epistles, uh, some pretty bad things were discussed. All right, so I want to talk again about this idea of what we can talk about or laugh about and what things that we should define for ourselves rather than let leaders define. Okay, so um, uh, one, one example of uh, even naming names is in the uh, epistles and uh, beyond the bad things that were discussed uh, that people were doing, he actually named names in some cases. Uh, I want you to know that each stage of uh, biblical escalation occurred for anyone who I've talked about to no avail, uh, to prevent, pretend avail, and then they have lied about the past. So if somebody lies about the past, they're not repentant. Uh, I've, I've made a, that uh, process, uh, carrying out that process, a point uh, since I was a child. And I read that, about that principle in Matthew 18, 15 through 18. Jesus says, uh, if your fellow believer sins against you, go and tell them in private what he did wrong. If he listens to you, you have helped that person to be your brother or sister again. But if he refuses to listen, go to him again and take one or two people, uh, one or two other people with you. Every case uh, may be proved by two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen to the church, then treat him like a person who does not believe in God or like a tax collector. Uh, no, notice that each step of escalation is a command, not an option. This check um, balances out the, uh, the idea of grace. If, uh, if there's no escalation, it's just sin will abound. That's all you're going to get. Also notice that uh, <clears throat> there were sins that were exposed publicly in the Bible, you know, like I was saying. And uh, some cases it was because the sin was public, even if there was uh, not a, an escalation, sometimes it went right to the public level as ex escalation if, you know, like I'm saying, the uh, original problem was public. I hope that what I share publicly helps in some way even if it just gets people talking about uncomfortable things. Evil people operate in the dark. Uh, the only way to confront this is with courage. The, word, uh, the world calls the person who exposes wrongs the bad guy. You know the phrase, I don't want to be the bad guy, but... All right? So that idea is from humanism or human nature, not from God. Around 2015 or so uh, was what I would call... Uh, I was what I was called healed gradually from uh, the previous relationship, but by then I would say I was healed, uh, or what I would call healed. So I started noticing uh, the kind of women who didn't flaunt, flaunt themselves nor pursue me. I dated one like that and then married one. Uh, people told me in that first year of marriage uh, that the first year of marriage is the hardest, uh, but that's not how it was for us. I almost felt bad about saying how good it was. I didn't want to diminish the challenge of others. It wasn't the right time. <laughs> so uh, the Bible says in Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. <laughs> uh, I think one of the things that was helpful in my marriage is that we both had roommates before, so the hurdles related to that weren't new to us. Overall, though, we are both people who look out for others, so being together is very restful and encouraging. I'm, I'm very thankful uh, for my life now and my wife. I hope that sharing my story will prevent others from falling into the same traps. Thanks for stopping by.